All right, guys, this is episode two of the mobile bar build out of the 1958 Grumman. In episode one, I stripped the interior, I built the service window for the side, and then uh, had the body sandblasted. Pretty straightforward, so let's just jump right in from there. All right, here is the Grumman. Let me catch you up to where I'm at right now. I've got uh, some of the cabinets set up here. You can see I'm using, these are wall cabinets. Uh, so they're only 12 inches deep for this side and so this will be our little walkway here and then there'll be a, a countertop here and a countertop here with the sink in the middle and then under we're going to move this over and have room for a refrigerator and trash right there but that's what the inside is looking like right now and then let me show you how the polishing turned out All right, so here's the process of uh, polishing this front up. And this time lapse is a little bit longer than I wanted it to be. So you can go ahead and skip to three minutes if you don't want to see this. But I, I wanted to show the whole process because it ended up taking me like three and a half hours working on this thing and a little over like an hour and 20 minutes of recording time. So you can see I, I sanded it all down, but when you look real close, you can see there's still like little dimples, of course, from the sandblasting process. And so I was just trying to get it down enough to see if it could be polished. So you see here I'm polishing with uh, a red rouge and the uh, like the real stiff polisher. And it was just not cutting it. You could still see too many imperfections. So now I'm sanding everything with that Eastwood stripper. And that's a really good tool, but it has a bunch of different flapper wheels and uh, attachments for it. And so now I'm trying, I believe it was a 120 grit flapper wheel. And now I'm switching over to... It's hard to describe this thing. It's kind of like a, like a Scotch-Brite pad or something like that that's really stiff. And it's supposed to be around 240 grit. So then after that, I'm using my uh, orbital sander here. And that is at 320 grit to really try and take it down. And then I, I don't think I had to sand it again after it. Um, no, no. Here you can see I'm polishing just that one section to see if I'm even able to bring it to the shine that I want. And I was. It was able to, to get pretty shiny. So I go ahead and then polish the rest of it. But boy, it was quite a process for this. And uh, this is a difficult piece because there's, you know, some unusual angles and there's a bunch of rivets and there's hinges and stuff like that. So the flat portions on the, the van will be a little bit easier. But I just kind of wanted to show the whole process here of what it took. The, you know, the little trial and error. So this is my medium cutting polisher. I was using um, the green rouge for that, and then now I'm finishing it up with the with the soft polisher, the white the white wheel with the uh, white rouge. This is how the polish turned out. This is what three and a half hours of polishing will do. On this side, I did a little bit more, so you can see the reflection here. And then this side I did a little bit less to kind of see where we liked it. And uh, we definitely like it better like this. This is what we're gonna aim for for most of the surface. And then uh, here's like uh, chrome, here's the chrome bumper. So you can see how much, <laughs> how much shinier that is. And then uh, over here, I've got the uh, 12 foot uh, countertops. This is uh, American maple wood. It's pretty thick too. So what I'm gonna be working on right now is over here. This steel plate, I don't like it, of course, it looks terrible, and it was just bondoed over. So what I'm going to do is take this off, and then I am going to cut a piece of aluminum to fit in there. And what I would like to do is, uh, obviously I'm gonna have to drill out all these rivets to remove this plate, but what I would like to do is use a low temperature brazing solder, like uh, one of those low temperature welding sticks to see if I can get this installed without having to uh, whip out the spool gun and weld it. And I think that when it's polished, that'll actually end up looking a little bit cooler. It'll look like an old school vintage repair, almost like a, a, you know the old lead fill uh, repairs um, or the modern you know leadless lead filler repairs. So we'll see. So this piece was obviously cut from the, the piece that I took out to make room for the window. 
And here I am sanding off all the paint. And I'm actually cutting this little quick time lapse short because it took me forever to do that. And it made me happy that I ended up sandblasting the, the vehicle because if I would have had to have sanded all of the paint off of this, it would have taken forever. So I've been running a couple tests uh, with the aluminum to see how the brazing rod does with it. And it hasn't been turning out very well. I started off, let's see, I started off this way here and I was heating it up from the outside and I was using the brazing rod. And I was really hoping that it would fill in this crack and get in there, but I don't know if you can tell or not. It, it just, obviously it had no penetration cause it, it doesn't do that, but it also didn't fill in any of the gaps. So then I tried heating it up from the backside so I was applying heat on this side here and then trying to see if I could get it to draw it in. And I tried it, um, I tried it vertically and horizontally and I just could not get, I just couldn't get to fill in that crack. So it filled in a little bit here on this side, but then I ended up breaking it apart and it didn't fill in here. So I thought it would look kind of cool, like an old school repair that goes along with the vintage style of it, but it just doesn't. So I am gonna have to weld it up uh, now I don't have any argon gas right now uh, and I do need to get another mini spool of aluminum so I'm gonna go ahead and start on something else. Alrighty I've got the uh, radiator removed here and I was taking a look at the motor and she's in really good shape. Uh, I had to change out just a couple of plugs. Uh, these plugs not the spark plugs. I've got those spark plugs here. They're, uh, they're pretty old so I'm gonna replace them but they're actually in pretty good shape. Now for this radiator I showed you guys the front here and how these is just flaking apart. Watch this, just flaking away. That wasn't even the worst part of this. I didn't know until I looked at the back, but this thing was in a fight with the, uh, with the fan. And uh, I guess it won because it's still holding pressure, but man, that thing is beat up. So here's the new one. And what's kind of interesting about this is that this is actually for a 55 Ford F100. So the chassis for this would have been a 58 uh, Ford, like the motors is from the 58, uh, but the radiator was a 55, so that's kind of cool. And usually when that happens, it's because the, the coach builders or whoever is, is making the chassis, they'll have extra like radiator supports lying around back in the day. And so they probably had some 55 radiator supports and so they just hooked up the 58 motor to the 55 radiator until they ran out of these and then they probably upgraded them to the 58 so that's usually how it goes with these old things you have to be careful the the years can vary uh, the alternator was a little bit loose but the belt's still in good shape so I just tighten that up and it's good to go the uh, fuel system seems fine the mechanical pump is working the filter still hanging in there and the carburetor seems great so it's gonna be real simple mechanically just gonna change out all the plugs I checked the cap and rotor they're fine uh, so we'll put on uh, new plugs all the way around and then a new radiator. I'll pressure test the radiator to make sure that these plugs are holding fine and then uh, should be good to go. So these are the headlight buckets. They're actually plastic. So I'm going to cut out all of these little rivets and then I'll be able to paint these and it'll make it a little bit easier to do the sanding and the polishing for the aluminum around here. And then this bottom piece, I was looking at it and you see it's it's pretty beat up here and it's just gonna be a pain to sand and buff this. And it's actually gonna be easier to just remove this entire piece and then make a new one. And that's part of the reason why I have that uh, shear and brake. So I can do these kinds of bends just super quick. So I'm gonna just, uh, same thing, I'm gonna drill out these rivets, pull that front piece off and then just make a new one out of some uh, 16 gauge aluminum. Here's the new radiator. I also removed the lower valence to build a new one and I got the headlight buckets out. Right now I've got it uh, pressure testing here to make sure that there's no uh, leaks. The only other things I had to do were the fuel filter. I put in a new one of those and then all the spark plugs are new. Other than that, mechanically she should be good to go. All right, I'm getting ready to install these cabinets in here. I'm going to show you a couple little modifications that I've got to make. If you see here, the 
cabinets stick up about two and a half inches and then the um, countertop is one and a half inches so it's going to be four inches higher so i'm gonna have to take four inches off of these but luckily there's four and a half inches down here on the bottom for the kicker plate so i'm gonna chop it at about uh probably three and a half inches so that the countertop will sit a half an inch above uh, the lip here on the edge i think that'll give it a sharp look now i've got these uh, fenders these inner fenders so i've got them marked up here where I need to cut out on these uh, cabinets so that I can then slide them over this fender and then same thing over here for the inner fender I've got this marked up so I can cut these out now as far as mating these cabinets together what I'm going to do if you see here this gap when they're touching here right in here is 7 16 of an inch almost exactly so I've got this piece of wood here that's actually three quarters of an inch thick. So what I'm gonna do is send this whole thing through the planer until it's exactly 7 16 of an inch. And then I'll be able to put those in between the cabinets and then bolt the cabinets together. So that I've got uh, cabinets for this side, cabinets for this side in one full, one full piece. And then I can just mount them up. And then I'll do angle brackets on the bottom to make it all nice and secure and then put the countertops on top and I'll be good to go. All right, I've got the cabinets mocked up in here. They're a little bit uneven, as you can see. Part of that's because the floor is uneven. Pretty much everything's a little uneven on these old vans. But uh, you can see the uh, wheel wells. Uh, this area over here is gonna be a uh, fridge and then room for a little trash can so the the countertop will come all the way to the end here and then pretty much in the center right here I'm going to do a sink right there and then we just put a bucket underneath to drain so the next step is to cut the countertop and this side is really straightforward it's going to be 24 inches so I don't need to cut it uh, lengthwise and I only need to cut uh, like 18 inches off of it here uh, this side's a little bit more difficult because I do have this kind of goofy shape to fit around the pocket door. So I've got 29 inches here and then it extends an extra 3 inches and then continues all the way back. So I'll cut those now. All right, here's how the countertops are looking. Pretty good. So I'm gonna put the sink right here. And on the back side, we've got it cut out around the pocket door. Came out nice. And then I am gonna do uh, a metal railing that goes across there, made out of like a iron pipe. So we did on the last one, it came out real sharp. So it's coming along.
All right, I've got a sample of the countertop here. It's already sanded with 320 grit, so it'll be the same as uh, when I do the rest of the counter. And I've got four different finishes here that range from the light uh, golden pecan, a little bit darker red mahogany. I've got uh, classic gray, and then a real dark ebony finish. And I'll do one of them on each of these strips, and then we'll see which one the uh, client prefers. Here's how the stain's looking. Pretty nice. I'm going to take it out into the sun so we can get a better look at it. All right, what would you pick? <laughs> I don't know, this is tough. I think that gray looks pretty sharp. I don't know, I also like this light one too, the golden pecan. Well, I'll send it to the clients and see what they pick. So they had me hold the wood up against the polished aluminum here so they could get a good look at it and uh, we all decided on the gray the third one there we think that one looks the sharpest there's something about the transition between the wood and the polish here that doesn't look quite right and we don't want it to look too red or too dark so that's what we're going to go with all right i'm getting ready to paint up the uh, frames here this is the door frame and then this is the service window frame and then this is the outer frame for the service window and I'm going to be painting these all uh, semi-gloss black. So here's how it's looking. All painted up so now I can uh, put the aluminum back on it. So this is another time lapse of polishing and again it took a little bit longer than I expected so if you want to cut ahead you can cut to 19 minutes and 18 seconds. Uh, what I sprayed right there was a little bit of CLR. This did get a little bit of, um, I don't know what it was, it was hard water or something that got, that got on it and uh, it made it look a little bit ugly. So what I'm doing here is I'm, I'm putting a finish on the back side. So this is the inside that you'll only see from inside the vehicle or when the service window is actually lifted up. So I was going for actually like a brushed look. I didn't want to take it to a high polish. And what I did here after kind of giving it a good brush was I put some, I put a, like a liquid polish on there just to see if I could get a little bit of a protectant layer and it did not look good. So I tried with the polishing wheel as you just saw and it looked terrible. So then what I finally did was I went over it with a 240 grit abrasive wheel on that uh, Eastwood stripper and the inside looked great. It looked nice and brushed. So then I matched it up with the um, frame there just to make sure that everything fit and there were no issues and now this is the side that I actually have to polish. So what makes this so tricky is that I have to match this up with the rest of the vehicle and because this is virgin material it would have been relatively easy to get this to an absolute mirror shine but it wouldn't match the rest of the vehicle if I had a mirror finish on the service window and the door and I had a kind of a vintage rougher look all the way around. So what I did was I went over it first with the 240 grit abrasive wheel and then I polished it directly from there and it ended up, um, didn't, it didn't love that. Uh, I was having a little bit of trouble working through the polish. You could see there's a few times here where I'm stopping and contemplating what in the world I'm doing. Here I am <laughs> trying to figure it all out. There's just a whole lot of, of trial and error on this. And it would have been nice if I was able to bring everything to a mirror polish, but that's just not going to be practical on the full van. So I'm really trying to give it like a really cool, vintage, hand polished look. And I think I got pretty close. Uh, we'll see. Uh, I'm eventually when I put it back on the vehicle and then polish the rest of the vehicle, it's going to take a lot of time to make sure that everything blends uniformly because I only have about 60 hours, give or take, uh, allotted to actually do the polishing on the vehicle. And if I were to have to bring it to a mirror shine, I'd probably need triple that or maybe more. It's going to be tough. So here I'm using, a, with the last thing I'm using, a buffing wheel and a liquid polish. And it, it comes out pretty nice and it's got a real nice uh, seal on top of it too. I'm getting ready to install the electrical. This is what the outside looks like, so that you can just plug a uh, extension cord into it. I've got the hole drilled out right here, and this is just to the left of the pocket door, so that I can run the, the wiring underneath the vehicle okay. And what I'm gonna do for interior wiring 
I've got a, this one's going to be a light switch, and then it'll be a GFCI outlet with a little USB port so people can charge their phones. And then I've got four lights that go on the top here. This is how they'll look. They've got a porcelain uh, face with an Edison style LED bulb. I think they only take like three watts. They're super low energy. And then I've got an outlet here for the uh, fridge. I've got the uh, outlet here mocked up. Let me show you what it looks like inside here. I've got the lights up there. They're looking pretty sharp. I haven't ran the electrical conduit yet, and that's because I still have to do some painting and polishing inside. But you can see you've got the little square boxes with the Edison bulbs. I think they look pretty sharp. And then I've got the uh, out outlet here, and then a light switch, and then over here, is going to be the uh, outlet for the fridge. So it's looking good. All right, guys, that's it for episode two. Thanks for watching. I really appreciate all the comments and support that I've gotten on this build as well as the others. I know a lot of you guys are waiting on the next trophy truck video, and the plan for that is to have episode six of the trophy truck build come out next week. And then the following week, I'd like to have episode three of the Grumman build come up. So stay tuned for that. I've got some pretty cool things moving forward here.